Hey everybody, Jared here. This is so weird. I'm in this corner. Normally I'm in that corner. I'm not used to it. So a friend of mine was doing some work, some research work, and he was asking, is it possible to extract the surround sound audio out of a DVD in an editable and still surround sound fashion? Now, the work he's doing actually is okay when it comes to using these copyrighted materials. You have to be very careful about this because we are going to be dealing with materials that are owned by somebody else. Matter of fact, we're not even going to really play any surround sound materials in this video because YouTube may not be happy with that. So we're going to show you how this works. Now, again, remember, I'm going to be showing you how to rip from a disc. And of course, the legality of that is based on what you're going to be doing with it. So please be careful. Don't say that I told you you could do this. What I'm telling you is how to do this. Now, you can do this, but here's how it's possible to do it. So I'm going to be using Handbrake. Handbrake is this wonderful piece of software. And Handbrake by itself doesn't work. You need to actually have the libdvd CSS DLL file installed in your computer. I'll include a link in the video for you to do it. You just drop the DLL file in your Handbrake folder and it's just fine. Handbrake is a wonderful package, but I want to go through step by step what it takes. Now, for my demonstration today, which we're not going to hear at all, so I'm just waving a DVD at you, I was going Going through the, the DVDs at work and I'm like, hey, look, there's Chicago. I don't know why Chicago jumped out at me, except on the back in big orange lettering, it said Dolby Digital 5.1 Surround and DTS 5.1 Surround. So actually two different surround soundtracks on this disc. Wait a second. It's in French as well. Three different. And I want to use this video to kind of go through and explain the way this works on a DVD. So I popped the DVD in my drive already. It's already there. And I'm going to bring up, um, let's bring up, actually, I'm going to bring up VLC. VLC is always a great way of starting this discussion. All right, a VLC media player. And I'm going to open the disc. There it is. There's Chicago. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click... Uh, Play and then lower my volume quickly so that you don't hear anything about the disc and it's going to load. Now, a DVD is going to have a menu and that's where this menu is. And the menu is going to allow me to navigate to all sorts of information that exists on the disc. Matter of fact, if I go to setup, what you're going to find is under audio options, there's actually English 5.1 Dolby, English DTS and French 5.1. So it's three different audio tracks for the entire movie. If I go back to setup, you're going to find that there's actually uh, one, two, uh, there's two different um, subtitle tracks for the movie. Let me turn those off and make sure it's set to off and go back to setup. And if I go to main menu again, there's even special features. And that, of course, is going to have the feature commentary, which is yet another audio track. So this is going to have the main feature in this movie is going to have four different audio tracks associated with it. It's kind of neat when you look at that. Let me come back over here to the main menu. Now, from the main menu, if I click on title, you're going to see that there are actually 10 different titles on this movie. One of them is one hour and 53 minutes, which, of course, would be the movie that we're looking at. These other titles are different. Now, titles are different than chapters. If I would actually go to title one, jump into the movie, and then I were to look at the chapter points, you'd see that there are 21 different chapter points here. So, again, that's very different uh, than the title. So the, the chapter points are just breakpoints in the video file that we're looking at. Now, let me come back over here and take a look at media information, click on codec, and you'll see that there's all this data. So there's uh, a subtitles, subtitles, subtitles. There's the big video stream, subtitles, uh, closed captions. Oh, and here's the audio stream. And you can see where it says 3, 2, LFE, and that's going to be um, the, the 5.1. The three channels that we're looking at are left, right, and center. Uh, then there's the two rears and then the LFE, which is the low frequencies, which would be the subwoofer or the 0.1 as it were. And of course, here's the DTS file. So this is all the sort of data that exists on this disc. And so it's all right there for us to look at. Now, VLC can play a DVD. VLC can play a DVD and our problem. Handbrake needs an extra DLL because this DVD is encrypted and it can't see without it. So let me come over here and close this and launch Handbrake. By the way, both VLC and Handbrake are free, and I will also include the links. Uh, do I want to recover those? No. All right, so let's come over here and click on Chicago. Now, Handbrake defaults wrong. It defaults to what it usually thinks you're trying to do, but in this case, it's not what we want it to do. So we're going to go step by step through the different things that go into Handbrake for you to decide what it is that you really want. Remember, my goal today is to strip out the audio as a 5.1 wave file. 
That's what I want to be able to do is see those tracks in their purest form. I don't want it compressed. Remember, on the DVD, everything is compressed. So again, we're going to see, look at over here, we've got, we've got 10 different titles. And that title, by the way, has four audio tracks and four subtitle tracks. See, just like it was before. But now we know what those are. So the first things first, I'm going to go through over here and take a look. I do want an MPEG-4 file, but I don't want this preset. This preset doesn't do me any good. This is not an HD video. This is a DVD. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to find the general very fast 480p. So basically, I want a standard definition, and I want the fastest codec possible because I don't want to spend a lot of time doing this because I really don't care about the video at all. The dimensions, I'll leave plain. Now, if you did care about the video, this next one's really important. Generally, what this is going to do, it's going to try to de-interlace the video, take those different fields of video that would have been invisible on an old television with a regular DVD player, but that would come up as little interlaced lines on a modern television. And what we're going to do here, normally we'd leave it on, but since that's processing, I'm going to say off and off. I don't want it to do any of that work because I don't care about it. Under video, the one thing I am going to be very specific, though, is I'm going to set my frame rate to be same as source. This way, I know that I'm going to get the exact same frame rate. And a lot of times when people are loading videos into Handbrake, it's because the frame rate is called variable frame rate, and variable frame rate is terrible. Variable frame rate, and again, I'm going to go to constant frame rate, same as source. Variable frame rate makes things uneditable in a lot of programs. Um, so that's what we come here. But same as source, will lock it into place. Since the original was a, a constant frame rate, this will be as well. Now for the audio, this is where it gets fun. If we look over here, there are four audio tracks, English, English, French, and the director's commentary, which is just in stereo. They didn't record the director in surround sound. Coming over here, um, I'm going to start off with the AC3, that is the Dolby digital file. And it's 448 kilobits per second. Notice, by the way, the Dolby, uh, the, uh, the digital DTS file is 768 kilobits per second. And that's really an interesting one because there's a big debate about which is better, which is Dolby or DTS. DTS uses more data. Dolby says they're more efficient. We're going to go with the Dolby file. And we're not actually, you know, you're tempted to mix it down to 5.1, but instead, I don't want to do that at all. I want to just come over here and say AAC pass through. And what that's going to do is it's going to say, well, the original file was an AAC3C file. I want you to just bring that file in as is. Just give me the audio data in whatever this new file is. So what I'm going to be doing when I'm ripping it is I'm going to be ripping the video. I'm going to be kind of putting it in as quickly as I can, and I'm going to leave the audio alone, except I'm only going to be using this audio file. Most of the time, if you're making a DVD, you don't do this at all. You actually want it to be that stereo or some other file format, whatever it's going to be. Lastly, I'm going to go over to subtitles. I'm going to make sure that I don't have any subtitles turned on. I'm going to hit clear because I don't want to actually spend the time having it scan through the subtitles. So basically what I've done is I've taken my video file. I've set it to 480p. So I've got it to 480. I've turned off all of the filters. I've made sure that the video is the same constant frame rate that it started with. And I set the audio to be the AC3 to be an AAC pass through. And when I do that, I come over here and hit Browse, and I hit Go, it'll take, on my computer, about 20 minutes. And that 20 minutes is pretty good when you think that it's not just copying the 5 gigabytes of data, the 4 gigabytes of data, from that DVD onto my hard drive. Remember, it's actually on a disk right now. But it's decrypting it, encoding it, and dumping it to my hard drive. So that's the first step. And like magic, I've already done it. So now that I've already done it, I'm going to come over here and show you that if I go back to VLC... VLC, VLC Media Player, and I'm going to come over here, Media, Open File, and come on, you can do it. There it is, Chicago1.m4v, and it's 1.1 uh, gigabytes. And if I click on Open, making sure the volume is down, you're going to see that I have just the movie. I have no, I, uh, the chapter, the, notice by the way, the, the, the chapter points stayed in, those little dashes there. And if I click on the uh, codec information, you're going to see that the, there's, there's a lot less data than there was before, right? What we see here is that we have the codec. Uh, this is the video. And then we see that we have the audio file right there. So there's the video file. There's the audio file. And that's all that's on this video file. Now, the next part of this is going to be kind of fun. 
Now, I know that I normally do my videos demonstrating with free software, but today I'm actually gonna go through and use an Adobe package because I like it. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna load Adobe Audition. Adobe Audition is, is a great program and you have to think if you're gonna be doing anything with these multi-channel uh, uh, surround stuff, you're probably gonna end up in Adobe Audition. It's got some great files there. F F Adobe Audition can open video files uh, natively. So I can click on open and I can come over here and load chicago1.m4v, which by the way is the mp4 file. And it's gonna say, it's gonna take 17 minutes. No, it's gonna take about two minutes to open the file because really this is an MPEG file. This is a highly compressed video file and it's gonna take a while to open it. So we're going to, it's gonna take one minute to open it. So I'm gonna vamp for one minute. Now, the next step is to strip the audio from the video. Remember, we have the video file as an MPEG stream we also, it's an MPEG-4 stream. We also have the audio file, which is still the original Dolby a a AC3 file that is highly compressed and has all the tracks inside of it. Well, it's compressed however it is. We wanna blow this up. And we expect when we blow it up, it's gonna get very, very big. So one of the cool things about Adobe Audition is, is that you can open video files. And the reason I'm on this side of the screen is because over there, is the preview window. It's right over here, is the preview window that will allow me to see it. Adobe Audition, when you edit, by the way, you're gonna lose the video. You, you can't edit video in Adobe Audition. You use Premiere Pro for that, which of course is part of the entire suite. Uh, but all right, let's see if it finishes off here so we can take a look at it. Don't worry, you're not gonna have to wait too much longer or I'm not gonna have to cut this up. It's made it really as easy as possible today. But the idea, again, is, and again, if I really did care about the video, then I would have deinterlaced it and I can do all the other things with it. But I'm just trying to get through this as quickly as possible. We're also, remember, this is a pretty worth, worst case scenario, right? We're talking about one hour and 53 minutes. So this is a pretty big file. I had another video I was going to play with today, but, you know, Chicago is going to be good enough. It doesn't matter what I do. It's nice to be able to see what the data looks like once it opens. Remember, I'm going to be seeing six tracks. I'm going to be seeing left, right, center, LFE, which is the low frequencies, or the subwoofer, and then I'm gonna see the left surround and the right surround. And those are the six tracks, or the 5.1. The point one is usually not as important because a lot of times you get the, the bass coming in from other, other places. All right, one second remaining, and there, there it is, six tracks. And not surprisingly, most of the data is in the center track. You've got a stereo left and right, you've got the center track, You've got the low frequency, which only really spikes several times. And then, of course, you've got your left surround and your right surround. I didn't say this was a well-mixed movie. I don't know if it's mixed for surround or not. I didn't pull out Top Gun. I, uh, I pulled out Chicago, and I also pulled out Blade Runner. But it doesn't really matter because we're not going to play any of it. But now that I have this, now that you can see the tracks... Um, by the way, this is, this is uh, interesting that you can kind of take a look at what the tracks are and you can see the videos over here as you do this. Then I can do File, Save As, and I can change this. And now it's already 48 kilohertz. And instead of saying Same as Source, I'm going to say 5.1, which, by the way, is Same as Source. But I want to make sure that the waveform is available to what it is. And again, it's 48, uh, uh, 48 uh, kilohertz, 5.1, 32 bits per... per uh, Per channel now, I may that may be overkill. I probably could downsample the 16 bit and be fine. But to make your life a little bit easier, let's pretend I've already done it because I've already done it. And I'm going to hit File Open, and you're going to find there's the WAV file. Oh my God, that WAV file is 7.6 gigabytes. That's right, because unlike the Dolby file, but look how fast it opened because it's already uncompressed. That's the, the cool thing about uncompressed files. Uncompressed files open and they close. So the idea here is, is that you have all these files. There it is. You've got your channels. You can do with it what you want. So the answer to your question is, can you extract the six channels of a DVD as a surround sound? The answer is yes. You do it in Handbrake. Handbrake that has been equipped with the proper DLL so that it can decrypt the DVD. You want to make sure that you kind of minimally process your video, that you throw your Dolby track out as is, you bring it in here, you save it as a waveform, and there you go. Thanks for watching. I hope you are doing the right thing. Do not pirate. Do not think that you, just because you have an access to it, you can do things with it. I'm really just showing this to you so that you can do this. I mean, there's a lot we can do to study these types of files. And now that I just have the file on my computer, it's better than just dealing with the video. 
So again, I want to make sure that we realize there was a real reason to do this. I'm not pirating this movie. Matter of fact, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to delete Chicago. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure you um, like and subscribe and all the good stuff.